Hi everyone, JJ here with The Art of Value. Welcome. Well, today we're going to look at super investor Terry Smith. If you don't know who he is, he's sometimes referred to as the UK's Warren Buffett. He runs Fundsmith and a smaller cap and mid cap fund Smithson. And we'll have a look at what they've been buying in this past quarter. I've put quite a bit of work into this one, so I'm excited for it. So let's get straight into it. So here on Ticket Terminal, we can see what they have been buying Fundsmith. This actually incorporates Smithson in it. They don't separate it out on Ticket Terminal. This shows international filings, not just in the US. So they do buy worldwide. Now, not that long ago, Terry Smith had this book published. You might have heard of it. It's called Investing for Growth. But he does have value investing elements to his investing as well, similar to how Warren Buffett does it. So we'll get into that along the way too. But it's a really good book. I'm going to put a link in the description to that. Well worth a read. So here on Ticket Terminal, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well, a referral link. We can see the stocks that they own here, and it's the percentage change in the number of shares held right there. We can see that column there. So that's the important one. As we go down there, we can see what they hold, and the top one is Novo Nordisk at 9.64%. But down here in this past quarter is what we're interested in. We can see what they've been buying. Automatic data processing, 48.89%. There is Fortinet, which we'll have a look at. There's only a few in this past quarter. That's one. So they, Apple, they just added a little bit to you see there. But 100% here, 100% of Clorox, which they've owned before. I know the story of that. I know during the pandemic, they sold out because it rocketed to the moon because of the, all the cleaning you know products and everything that they have bleach and so forth it just Clorox went to the moon and they got so egregious the price and Terry Smith has said that they sort of had to sell it and made sense to sell it but they bought it back now it's gone back down and they explain why they did that and this one here Croda International 26.83% We'll have a look at that. So some of these are in Smithson and some of them are in Fundsmith. They just bunch them all together here. And then Home Depot, they added a little bit too. Oddity Tech here, which is an interesting one, they added 92.07%. So they bought that a little bit earlier on and they've added to during this quarter here. You might see a few videos out there about what super investors have been buying the stocks, but I'm going to dig a little bit deeper, find out why that they've bought these things. Let's dig a little deeper and see what these companies are, especially the smaller caps, because I'm more interested in smaller caps. So I hope you get some value out of this. Let's get into it. First, I want to explain how Terry Smith invests, how he goes about it, and that will help us understand why he's bought these particular companies at this particular time. So here we go. Terry Smith is a fund manager from London. Fundsmith is an equity fund that invests in small number of high quality, resilient, global growth companies that are good value and which we intend to hold for the long term, they say. And Smithson, Fundsmiths can't invest in $2 billion companies or less because of the fund size. It holds so much money that it really it's not going to move the needle with these smaller companies. That's why they set up a fund called Smithson, which looks at these smaller companies. So this is the one that I'm more interested in. So Fundsmith owns really big companies. You might know if you've been following this channel for me for a while that I'm more interested in smaller caps with a long runway for growth. It's easier for a company to grow say from one or two billion and go 10x or more than say a huge company to, to do that. So he says we try to invest in only good companies. We don't overpay and then we do nothing. So fairly simple. <laughs> investing is easy, right? So this is similar to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. So we try and invest in only good companies. We don't overpay, so that's the value investing aspect to it. So they, they like a margin of safety. They don't. They're not going to pay up too much, which is difficult to do to find these quality companies that you know aren't expensive and then do nothing. So basically, let it compound. Don't interrupt the compounding unnecessarily, as Charlie Munger said and just let them run. That's their core philosophy and I like it a lot. I have to say I like that a lot. What is a good company then? That's the crucial fact. He says it makes high returns on operating capital employed. So that's something that Warren Buffett also likes in other value investors. Return on capital employed. That's what we can look for and we're going to look for some of that in the metrics. We're going to see if the companies they've bought have this, have these things to see if you know that they practice what they preach. Why return on capital is important. A good company has return on capital employed or ROCE above its cost of capital 
Every day you own a good company, its value grows. A bad company has a ROCE below its cost of capital. Every day its value declines. So that's a crucial point. We want companies that are going to shoot the lights out, a high ROCE, say 27%. And that is high. If you've looked at metrics of companies before, that's high and it's hard to find. It's so few companies that really have that. These are the core metrics that they look for. This is really important and really valuable, I think. Fundsmith portfolio companies from 2012 to 2018, he had the metrics of the companies that Fundsmith invested in. They had an ROCE between 26 and 31% during that time. And if we look at here, this is the average of the, say the S&P 500, it's only 17% during that time. So way above average return on capital employed. Gross margins they had were between 58 and 65%. And the average there is the S&P was 39%. And this here, FTSE, that's the FTSE in Europe. So that's the comparison there, which is, was a little bit higher for that. So operating margin that their portfolio companies had between 23 and 28 percent. So the S&P 500 average is around 16 percent during that time. Cash conversion, they had 95 to 108 percent, which is really high. And the S&P 500 was 96. And leverage, only 28 percent. So we want, they want this to be low. They look for companies that are low, and so does Warren Buffett. And the S&P 500 average there was 39 percent. And interest cover, you know, the S&P 500 was 9. So higher interest cover for their portfolio companies. So on average, they're looking for a greater than average, better than average. That's the quality companies. When he says this is a good company, what he really means is this is a really high quality company, not just good. So another thing that they look for here is growth driven from reinvestment of their cash flows at high rates of return. Number three, make money from a large number of everyday small ticket repeat predictable transactions. So typically the investment companies that do have that. Number four, able to protect returns against competition. So another word for this would be the moat or sustainable competitive advantage. So that's what really what they look for. He says if you have a high ROCE competition, we'll see that and try to come and take market share from you. So he talks about being able to defend that mode. Number five, resilient to change, particularly to tech innovation. And six, operating in sectors with tangible advantages. So brands, distribution, installed base, franchises. And then we have don't overpay and then do nothing. So that's just hold on to it. Let it compound. Now let's go into some of those companies that he's bought and have a look. Which ones do I want to dig deeper into? because these are high quality companies, or are they? Is there anything interesting for me or for you to dig into, to research a little bit deeper? So let's have a look at that. Now, if you're getting value out of this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you remember to hit that like button to help the algorithms to spread it to more people. Thanks. These are the companies that they've bought. I'm gonna start from the biggest, Fortinet here. So the market cap is $53.9 billion here, which is, that's, Basically too big for me, but I have had a look at the metrics here and I'll show you the return on capital employed is 37 here. Remember these metrics here? So they're looking for 26 to 31. Gross margin 76.6. .6. Gross margin they're looking for is between 58 and 65, so that's high. Operating margin of 23.33. So again, they're looking for 23 over 23. Cash conversion 122. So leverage minus 2.14 and interest cover 58 there. And so you get the idea. We look at Clorox, which is still another bigger company, really too big for me. I'm looking for smaller caps that you might be interested. So Clorox is 18.9 billion US dollars market cap and it's got a return on capital employed of 6.33, so pretty low there. This is just for the last year, mind you. We'd have to dig into it and see what's going on there. There was an anomaly there. This is what they said in their fact sheet. We acquired a position in Clorox after the share price of the high quality household goods company fell due to a cyber attack, the effects of which have now been contained. So they took the opportunity there. Remember, don't overpay. As I said, it shot to the moon during the pandemic. And then it had this fall afterwards. So they, they knew it was a good company and it's an old company. This is not a new company by any means. And they took that opportunity to buy it back. Okay, so next we have Graco. I don't know this company. And this is a $14.8 billion company. So mid cap, Graco is a US industrial company founded in 1926. So not a new company by any means. 
and focused on the design and manufacture of fluid measuring and dispensing equipment. The ROCE here is 27.8, so that's high. Gross margin 52, operating margin 29, cash conversion 197, leverage point just 0.02, which is really low, and interest cover 124. So all those metrics fit the metrics that they look for. Croda, another one, which we're getting smaller again going down this, is so 8.58 billion market cap. See the ROC here is only 8.83 for the last 12 months. They said their quota is a UK chemical ingredient company focused on the personal care and life sciences sectors. We've got gross margin 45, operating margin 17, cash conversion 145, leverage just 0.32 and interest cover 17. Now I get, we get to what is more interesting to me because the if you look at the market cap here it's 3.8 getting smaller so these smaller companies could have a longer runway for growth. We'd have to dive in and so see what the potential market is and so forth. It might not be the case, but they, you know, they like growth here. They like compounding over a long time. So chances are that could be the case. So this was back in June, 2023. They said Exponent, a US-based consulting business which focuses on highly technical areas within the engineering and environmental sectors, often in response to disasters and litigation. By the way, you'll notice that they haven't bought some of these companies recently in this past quarter, but I dug into their fact sheets and saw what they've been buying over the last few quarters. Not going, going back too far, going back about a year. The return on capital employed is around 24, which is really high. Gross margin of 35.7, operating margin of 20, cash conversion of 91, and leverage of 0 0.08, so low again, and interest cover, no debt. And so we have here Oddity, which again is interesting to me. I am going to dig into this one, I think. Oddity, a newly listed company based in Israel, which develops and sells cosmetics and skincare direct to consumers. So a newly listed company, which is interesting. And so July 2023, so seven, eight months so far that they've had it. So this market cap is only nearly 2.5 billion enterprise value of 2.297. So yes, we're getting down to the small caps. With smaller caps, with newer companies, the metrics sometimes aren't so good or you can't tell yet. But this one, you'll notice the ROCE is 35, which is really high just for the last 12 months. So this is one I'm definitely want to dig into. Gross margin of 70, operating margin of 14, cash conversion of 50. 51, leverage of 0 0.05 and interest cover of 147. So this looks really interesting to me. So I'm certainly going to dig into some of these companies a bit more and have a look at them, research them. I'm not saying they're a buy for me at this point, but I'm going to dig into them, spend some time on them, spend quite a few hours on them, finding out about them to see if they would any of them would go on my watch list for the future. So what do you think? Do you think any of these companies might be good to dig into? Let me know in the comments what looks interesting to you. Now, if you don't know already, I've started the Art of Value Patreon over there. I'm talking about stocks that I'm researching just like this, but more in depth and ad free, of course, in an ongoing way. It's just for the price of a cup of coffee. I'm doing that each month. So I'll put a link in the description and hopefully see you over there.